My name's Simon Cole. I'm an associate professor and the chair of the Department of Criminology, Law, and Society in the School of Social Ecology. I do research on the interactions between science and the law. My primary interest is fingerprint identification and the use of fingerprint identification in the criminal justice system. Fingerprint evidence is one of the most widely trusted forms of forensic evidence in a uh, court of law. It's based on trying to create a link between a fingerprint found at a crime scene and a fingerprint taken from a person that you have in custody. They do that by seeing similarities between the print at the crime scene and the print taken from the person in custody. But the question is, how much similarity is necessary to reach this conclusion that they come from the same source? Lots of prints in the world have lots of similarities to one another. How many similarities do you need to decide that these two prints came from the same finger and from no other finger in the world? Everybody assumes that the important question about fingerprints is, are they unique? It turns out, 100 years later, that that's really not the key question. There's not much dispute about whether all fingerprints are unique. The the key question is how accurate fingerprint examiners are when they match fingerprints. Around the turn of the 20th century, the 1910s, 1920s, what happened in courtrooms when fingerprinting was a new technology? Why did the courts allow fingerprint evidence into the courts in the first place? So I went back and looked at the early court cases, the appellate records, the trial transcripts, the scientific literature that existed at that time. And to my astonishment, I found that it was led into court without any scientific studies showing how good or bad it actually was or how well it actually worked. We assume that it always gets the correct answer. We've treated it as 100% accurate, as something that is never wrong, and that's just not true. Errors, errors do occur. The question is how often they occur. So we're now 100 years later, and the studies to validate fingerprint evidence are beginning to be done. The Daubert decision is probably the most important scientific evidence case ever decided in the United States. It's a Supreme Court case from 1993 that says that for scientific evidence to be used in court, it has to be both relevant and reliable, because my research shows that there are no reliability studies for fingerprint evidence. According to the Daubert case, that means that fingerprint evidence shouldn't be allowed in court. One of the consequences of juries not having good information as to the accuracy of fingerprint identification is that they've assigned higher value to it than it actually has. They've been told that it's 100% accurate. We know that isn't true, so they have to be told how accurate it is. One of the things that this research can do is actually reform forensic science. We want the justice system to do better at finding the right person and not identifying the wrong person. If scientific evidence is misused, it can lead to a person being convicted of a crime they didn't commit or being acquitted of a crime that they did commit. There are errors in fingerprint identification. 